Hi there, and welcome to another video in our series of revision clips focusing on the labour market. This video is about monopsony power in the labour market. It's an important issue. It's one that I think is becoming increasingly prominent. As we'll see in a moment, there's some high profile current examples of potential monopsony power in this factor market. So what is a monopsony? Well, a monopsony happens when there is a sole or a dominant buyer, in this case, the employer in the labour market. And this means that the employer, the business, has buying power over their potential workers. They have wage setting power. And as we'll see in a few minutes, monopsony is a potential cause of labour market failure. The key to starting the analysis is to understand that the supply curve of labour is essentially the average cost of labour. In other words, what is the average wage per hour we have to offer to get the workers we need? Well, typically, if the supply curve is upward sloping, the monopsony employer will have to bid up the wage in order to attract new workers. But, and here's the key point, but the wage they pay is not necessarily reflective of the true marginal revenue product of the people they've employed. So <clears throat> what are some examples of monopsony employers? Typically, students tend to give fairly straightforward examples. The National Health Service is one, the biggest employer in the UK, employing well over a million people. The Armed Forces, uh, the, it's smaller than 20 years ago, but still employ hundreds of thousands of people. I think some really good examples can be taken from some of the giant outsourcing companies such as Capita and G4S. And then extend out into the current topical environment. Big, big employers, retailers such as Amazon, Sports Direct, the big supermarkets, Tesco's, Sainsbury's, um, Asda, and also local councils tend to be quite major employers in, in local towns. So these are good examples of monopsony employers. Now let's move on to the analysis. We're going to work our way through to show how a monopsony may pay a wage that is lower than the true marginal revenue product of the people they employ. Here's our starting point. It's a labour market where the labour supply curve is upward sloping and the labour demand curve is downward sloping. The normal equilibrium wage is W1E1. Now, the labour supply curve is the average cost of employing labour. It's the average wage per person employed. Notice that it's rising. And if you have to increase the average wage per person employed to attract extra workers, then the marginal cost of labour will be higher. I've explained this in the separate topic video on the difference between average and marginal cost of labour. So check that one out. It's on this playlist. The marginal cost of labour, MCL, is the change in total labour costs from employing one extra worker. And you should know from your understanding of marginal cost and marginal revenue that a profit maximising employer will employ people up to the point where the marginal cost of labour equals the marginal revenue product of labour. So the profit maximising level of employment actually is where marginal cost of labour, MCL, intersects with marginal revenue product, as shown by the labour demand curve. And in our diagram, this is an output, sorry, employment level E2. So the monopsonist will employ E2 number of people. And those people have an estimated marginal revenue product valued at W2. Now, the key question becomes, what wage does the monopsonist have to offer to get E2 number of workers to work for them? Well, we don't use the marginal cost of labour curve to find this out. We use the labour supply curve, the average cost of labour. And we find that to employ E2 workers, the monopsony power of the employer permits them to pay a wage rate W3. So they're paying W3, 
a relatively low wage. And W3 is less than W2, which is the marginal revenue product of those workers. So the total wages employed uh, are by, paid by the monopsony employer is W3 multiplied by E2, the wage multiplied by employment. That shows total wages. But here's the really key part of the diagram. The monopsony can exploit employed workers by paying them a wage lower than the value of the marginal revenue product. And the area of exploitation is shown by this area here. <clears throat> this shows the wages lost from underpayment by the employer. Interestingly, recently a new report from the Resolution Foundation did find a significant pay gap between workers on regular full-time employment contracts and those on zero hours employment deals. In fact, nearly 900,000 workers are on zero hours contracts and they've been in the spotlight recently and, and caught up with low wages and poor working conditions at Sports Direct and JD Sports amongst other businesses. So that kind of issue, the underpayment of workers in a monopsony situation is topical and this diagram can score you great analysis marks uh, to amplify the point. So this has been a look at monopsony in the labour market.